Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to open 200 plus shards, ancient shards on this two times event. We're starting out on the free to play account where I have, count them, one shard saved up. So you never know, this could be my what 1% chance to pull my very first legendary on this account. I've already pulled, by the way, one epic champion who I'm going to save for a future video to tell you guys about. She's been a, ah, uh, ah, uh, man, I guess I'm going to spend the gems. Man, silver is so hard to get in the early game, dude. It is so hard to get. I'd rather spend the 10 gems than the uh, 250k uh, silver. I'm holding on to my 277k for dear life. Okay, this is big. Okay, I mean... I mean, I get so much more excited about an epic on my free-to-play than I do about my main account. And normally, I'd be like, okay, whatever, Mass Fearmonger next. So, Mass Fearmonger is actually kind of a new champion, but he's my second epic ever on this account. So, I'm probably going to go ahead and use him. He's not great, but he's interesting in terms of his crowd control abilities. So, he has one uh, one enemy two times. Each hit decreases the turn meter uh, if the target is under uh, fear of true fear. and reduces the cooldown of this champion's taste of despair passive if it kills an enemy. I hate that. Uh, I hate the kind of if it kills an enemy abilities. Uh, attack one enemy, especially as the game gets more difficult because it feels like nothing kills an enemy once you get further and further in the game, right? Uh, unless you're running like the best nuker in the game. Has a 75% chance of placing a fear. So 100% chance of a fear on one enemy and then a decreased speed for two turns, whatever. Uh, true fear on all, on all, excuse me, on two enemies if it kills an enemy. Eh, I don't like that either. Uh, attacks one enemy will ignore 35% of the target's defense if the target is under fear or true fear. Increase speed, revive on death, all this crap if it kills an enemy. Fills the shame is turn mirror below, uh, by 50% whenever an enemy's HP drops below 20%. I mean, his taste of despair is cool. Everything else, man, does he have sick multipliers? Anybody seen this dude in action? I must admit that I haven't. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to my main account where we're going to open 200 of these things. Fill our increased capacity champion storage. Be right back. Yeah, so guys, I'm in the process of actually expanding my slots right now, and man, this is really expensive. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> I ran out of gems. I had 2,000. I'm going to run out of silver, too. I'm at 270 spots right now. I think I'm going to be out of resources here. I'll do one more. Whoa! 280 right now, and I think, what do I have left for so 6,000 silver? That's all I got left. Ah! I had so much. All right, let's go ahead and go uh, till we can't, uh, till we have to make room. Here we go. Man, took us, what, three minutes to get into the actual bulk of the shard openings in this video. Apologize if you guys, if that bothers you, if that triggers you. Anyway, let me make myself a little bit smaller here. That way uh, we can see all of the champions we pull. How many legendaries do you guys think we're going to pull today? We got a Skull Crusher, Horden, and Drake. Drake, uh... Pretty, pretty beast mode in terms of his damage output. Obviously, Skull Crusher is uh, amazing because of his counterattack. I'm thinking we're going to get uh, three legendaries today's video. I'm going to make that call. Three legendaries, three legendaries, one dupe, and one new legendary. There we go. We're calling our shots here. So, so far, 25, make it 26 shards opened. And nothing really good. You know on Masked Fearmonger, you know a champion's not that great, right? When you uh, when, when you open him on your free-to-play and you're like, I think I'm going to use this guy. I think I'm going to, right? I don't know. Fang Cleric. I heard that Fang Cleric is actually a bit of an underrated healer. Let's take a quick look at his kit here, guys. Break up the video a little bit, too. 75% uh, chance of transferring one random debuff from this champion to the target, whatever. Heals an ally by 20% of the champion's max HP. Also fills the target's turn meter by 30% if they are fully healed by the skill. Plays a veil buff on the target for one turn if they are not fully healed by the skill. This is actually a really, really sick ability, Shadow Blessings, because it's on a two-turn cooldown. Two-turn cooldown with the 30% turn meter and the 20% heal, uh, heal uh, based on his max HP. So you build him up with a ton of HP. It, it seems pretty solid. Revise the dead ally, 30% HP, then fills the turn meter by 30%. Also unkillable buff on target for one turn, and a 15% continuous heal uh, buff for two turns. Well, I'll tell you what. He's not a beast. He's not like S-tier, speed in all battles. But I think that if I pulled him on my free-to-play, 
I would be a lot more excited than fear, Mass Fearmonger, and I would definitely build him up. Now it's kind of a 50-50. I already have my team that I'm kind of working on the free-to-play, so I'm not sure if I want to add that into it, and, you know, at this point. Taurus is everywhere right now. I'm probably going to build him up and just do a guide on him uh, for you guys because everybody's running Taurus, uh, mainly because of this Toxic Nova. Champion receives damage equal to 99% of their current HP, places an unkillable buff on his champion for two turns on a four-turn cooldown, has an 80% chance to make it a 100% chance of placing four 5% poison debuffs on all enemies for two turns. So again, has the weaken two on the A1 and uh, has a heal on the, or excuse me, on the A2 and a heal on the A1. Uh, so using him, especially against the uh, Nether Spider. Uh, but really good with that unkillable to keep him alive and doing a lot of poison damage as well. Also a frenzy set works on him. So you can give him almost a full turn meter again. Uh, because of the 99% damage that he's putting onto himself. Uh, so you can actually have him go like kind of back to back. Virgis is a really good champion who I just maxed out. Haven't done a guide on him yet, but I want to do a guide on him soloing Doom Tower. Uh, one of the most kind of robust champions in the game in terms of difficult to kill. Uh, really cool after the buff. The buff he got, the, uh, he got a huge buff probably about a year ago now, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but he went from being one of the worst uh, epic champions to, in my opinion, one of the better support champions in terms of epics. Old Hermit Jorg is one of the new epic champions, so excited to go ahead and take a quick look at his kit here. So far, no legendaries. No legendaries. Doom Priest, the ever so popular Doom Priest. Old Hermit Jorg looks pretty cool. Aesthetically, he's got the big, like, Survivor, 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 Survivor Sor uh, Torch. Kind of like a Jeff Probst, Tribe is Spoken type deal going on here. He has a face on his back. That's creepy. That is creepy. Anyway, he does look like an old hermit, uh, orc. HP burn on this A1 as A2 increase attack buff on all allies for two turns and fills his champ, uh, turns and... I can't speak today, apparently. Survivor, turn meter, what the hell, dude? Three turn cooldown, turn meter filled by 20% increase attack. Very kind of, I don't know, uh... Kind of Gorgorob-esque. Revives two random allies with 60% HP, then fills a turn meter at uh, 40%, places a perfect veil on them for two turns on a uh, five-turn cooldown. Jeez, he's he's really similar and kind of to Gorgorob, right? Only an orc uh, magic affinity as well. So uh, definitely some parallels there. Uh, uh, I have nothing. I have no resources left to buy this stupid slots. I'll be right back, guys. All right, here we go. Luckily, I do have 4 million, not 4,000 silver left. I was wrong there, but uh, still not enough to buy 10 more slots here. And we have no legendary so far on this poll. Uh, we'll see. Shatterbone's a nice uh, CC champion. Catacomb Counselor, a nice ally attack, a decent ally attack epic option. Kytus, not a huge fan of him. Uh, Cannon S, just an all right champion overall. So we got about 110 or so left. I feel like what I need to do here, <laughs> what I need to, okay, there we go, there we go, and it's a Cupidus. So, hey, good news is, don't have him, not a dupe for me. Bad news is, not an amazing champion. Uh, or I should say, good champion, I'm just not sure if I'll end up using him, right? Uh, he's, a, he's a companion champion uh, to Venus, who I also don't have. Attacks all enemies on A1 and AoE attack, damage increases by 15% if the target is has any debuffs. On the A2, attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. Man, why not put... It's a four-turn cooldown. Why not put it on all targets, right? Three times at random. Why not just attack all enemies? Uh, plays an increased attack buff on the champion for two turns and attacks one enemy. Has a 50% chance of placing an HP uh, burn debuff on all enemies for two turns. If this attack kills an enemy... Golly... Uh, attacks, uh, attacks inflict 25% more damage to targets under debuffs. Only available when Venus is on the same team. God, I read this kit and I'm thinking, why did I, why did I not include Cupidus and in my 10 worst legendary champions, man? Uh, Knight Errant is a hard-hitting champion. Really hard-hitting with his death warrant ability, uh, here. Uh, very, very hard-hitting. Yeah, Cupidus, you guys tell me, am I wrong? Am I missing something here? Is he a solid champ? To me... Yeah, didn't seem. I thought he was better than that after reading the uh, reading the kit real quick. So we got our one legendary who's not a duplicate. So they still owe us a dupe, and they still owe us a uh, 
They still owe us a new champion. That's what I'm looking forward to. Allure, Marksman, Relic Keeper here in terms of in Defiled Sinner, in terms of our epics. A couple good ones, a couple uh, bad ones there. Uh, okay, what I need to do, what I was saying earlier before we get to Legendary, Wreck Your Draft, have a guide out on him. Pretty good, really good heal healer. Uh, what I need to do is just open him up all at once, right? None of this waiting. That's what I got to do. Here we go. So give me the, give me a bunch of legendaries now. Boom. Okay. Didn't work, but we did get a new, uh, one of the new epics. No. Yeah. He's, is he the second batch? Two batches ago? Uh, one enemy three times. Attacks all enemies. Has a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn on a three turn cooldown. That's a 75% chance, 80% with Sniper. Has a 60, 75% chance of placing a decreased attack debuff for two turns on targets who received the Provoke debuff from the skill. Damage based on HP. Yeah, I'm already liking this dude more than Cupidus, and he is a new champion. Uh, just added yesterday or two days ago from the time this goes live. When other champion is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. Jesus. Sounds like it could be a lot of healing there, right? So he has a Leech debuff on the attacker for two turns. If the attacker is under provoke, uh, has a 70% chance or 100% chance when booked of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on the attacker by two turns. Dude, this guy looks like he could be a beast, man. Think about it. He has the leech. He has the decreased cooldown by two turns. And this is a, it's just like every every turn, every, every attack. It's not like a, a, a cooldown on this. Uh, and this was a, that's his passive number two. Passive number one is heals all allies 50% of the damage received. That's a lot, man. It seems like it, right? Because he has to provoke. He's going to be attacked a lot. And the decrease attack too. Jeez. This guy seems, you know, like he probably could use a, a day or two at the gym here. But uh, yeah, seems really solid, right? All right. Not as much as Fat Man. What do they name a champion Fat Man or something like that? All right. Let's see what we get here. All right, it's not working. This strategy is not working. Let's slow it down, slow it down. We've got to have like, I don't know, 60 shards left. Uh, so far I'm building, I'm building Taurus and I'm building that dude. What was his name again? I already forgot. Va Venus, Venus, Valak, V something. All right, next up. You guys pull anybody good? Let me know. Let me know. So far, this is not a, you know, a shard opening really to write home about. Did get a legendary, so, you know, we knew we were going to get one. All right, so we only have 42 left, only 42, right? Let's go ahead and summon two real quickly here. We'll make room and then come back. Just so we have a nice even number here. 42. Do I even, I don't even have the gems. He looks like Fat Man. That guy looks like Fat Man. The same exact character, it seemed like. All right, Jareg. All right, be right back. All right, guys, we're back. We magically got a, a couple more shards, too. Magically. Uh, <laughs> AKA, I bought a few more in the between. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we can collect all these rewards in the tournament. Champion Chase, thank you very much. Do we have an event as well going on? Uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, Champion Training. Okay, okay, nothing there. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into it here. 65, 65 left to go. I promise I will not get any more. No way. Just felt kind of... Uh, Kind of lackluster with just one legendary, you know? Kind of felt lackluster with just Cupidus. Uh, all right, let's go. And Cupidus, man, the more Romero I'm a big fan of, big fan of this champion. He's a good healer. He really is. He has a continuous heal on the A1 on the champion with the ally with the lowest HP. He has a continuous heal on all allies on the A2. And then he has a shield on all allies, equal to 25% of their max HP uh, on the A3. Pretty cool champ. Uh, you know, not the best, but certainly far from the worst in terms of a good support champion. Uh, leaned on him heavily in uh, Faction Wars. All right. There we go. Let's just do a speed round, right? We've been That was a, the worst pull so far. Let's just do a speed. Let's just do a speed. Start out with a Shaman. Okay, I lied. Okay. Oh, okay. Chancellor uh, Yasmin is actually a pretty good new addition to the game. So excited to see... Uh, to, to kind of revisit her kit real quick here. So, attacks one enemy, extra hit if it has no active buffs, whatever. Heals an ally by 40% of their max HP, and then heals by 60% instead if the ally has 50% HP or less. It's not a two-turn cooldown, good god. I remember talking about this when I did the new champion reviews. 50% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. That's a 75% chance. Then plays a sleep debuff on, uh, for one turn on enemies who have active buffs. Uh, four turn cooldown. I like it, man. Really solid champion, I think, guys. 
She's got that really nice heal and the 75% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. 102 base speed. Uh, I think that both of these uh, these epics are two of the better ones they released that I pulled here. So we've been lucky in that regard. We get Tayrell, we get Terror Beast. Yeah, they actually, all the epics they added this time, guys, let me know who your you know personal favorite was if you have one. Because I think they were really impressive, you know? I think it was a really good uh, batch of, of epic champions that they introduced to the game this go-around. Better than I can remember in a while. Uh, so let's see that Stagnite update. I think he might've been in there. We, I think we only have, okay. Another one. She's a reviver here. So a new dwarf champion, uh, Melga steel girdle and really on the a three here revives two random allies with 20% HP and 20% turn meter also plays a shield buff on the revived allies for two turns equal to 30% of their max HP on a five turn cooldown also has a shield buff on all allies equal to 20% of this champion's max HP for two turns and continues heal buff on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown this is a sheer grit this is actually a really solid champion guys another really really solid epic champion right the shield based on her HP and continuous heal on a three turn cooldown and then attacks one enemy a 50% chance of removing a random uh, debuff from a random ally so that's a 60, 75% chance. I like it, man. HP-based champion. I think she's really, really good. That's three good epics now we pulled. So while the video might be a little bit underwhelming in terms of uh, the legendary pulls, we can't complain about these epic pulls. That's for sure. Let me know, guys, in the comments below. We have five more left. Let me know in the comments below which one of these champions you want to see me do a guide on first. Happy to go ahead and uh, Ak the the Wenderin here. I actually maxed him out too. I haven't done a guide on him. So many guys to be made. So little time to do it, right? Let me know who you'd rather see out of all these champions that we pulled today in the video. We did get one legendary. I really called it wrong in terms of, uh, you know, what I was expecting. Expectations always fall a little bit short of reality, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, certainly when pulling the shards here. So we pull a ton of shards. We get one legendary, but we get some really, really nice epics. We're going to go ahead and end it here, guys. Good luck on your sharp pulls. Let me know who you pulled in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys. Hey!